This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello capitalism fans, I've got some great news for you. The holiday is coming. What holiday? Doesn't matter what holiday, celebrate whatever you like as long as you keep spending money. Furnace is a gorgeous board game designed by Ivan Lashen and published by Hobby World. And as long as you're buying things for the holiday, you might as well get yourself a copy because it's a great board game with barely any rules and despite its appearance, is not in fact a lump of coal. In Furnace, you'll take on the role of a capitalist. Those are not my words, the rule book calls them capitalists who'll acquire new factories, use them to convert resources, and tussle to see who can eke out the most coins. Wait a minute, Efka, that sounds like one of those stodgy strategy games named after metals like steel or Great Western aluminium. Well, you're in luck because Furnace is anything but stodgy. In fact, with some practice, you can complete capitalism in just under 30 minutes. A game of Furnace takes just a scantly four rounds, each with two distinct phases. In phase one, you'll compete with other capitalists to purchase the best factories available. And in phase two, your machines will grind their oily gears to spit out the most valuable materials. Elaine, why don't you tell the viewers at home how players will be buying new factories in phase one? Please, Efka, what do you take me for, the proletariat? I don't buy things, I simply bid on them. Like any self-respecting capitalist, you won't actually be spending money in this game. You'll use it as an obscene yardstick to measure who wins. Instead, you'll get four discs of varying sizes to impose your leverage over other players. Each bidding phase, a number of factory cards based on player count will be dealt to the table. Each card is something you can win and want to claim because later in phase two, you can use each ability on the bottom of the card to convert your resources. Let's say there's a card that lets me convert two coal into oil two times. I'd really like this card as I already have cards that let me make lots of coal and I also have a card that lets me convert oil into money. So in that case, I would put my maximum capitalism disc on it and then no one can outbid me. This auction follows very simple rules. I can put my disc on any card as long as it doesn't already have a disc of my colour or a disc of the same value. One by one, players will place these ownership pucks, populating an array of cards until none are left, at which point everyone with the highest value disc on the card wins it. Which is where you ask... If someone placed a level four disc on a card, meaning that they would inevitably win it, why would I then place a disc that is lower? This is a very good question because it leads us to a delightful mechanism. Anyone who doesn't win the card at the end of the bidding round, but does have the disc on it, will get the consolation prize at the top and they will get it a number of times equal to their disc. The juicy little secret is that sometimes getting the consolation prize is better than getting the card itself. Elaine putting that level four disc and declaring the card pretty much as her own is the best thing to have happened to me. Converting two coal into one oil isn't bad, but it's not super efficient either. Yes, oil is a rarer resource than coal, but I wouldn't want to do that too many times. Thankfully, if I put this free disc on that card, I will get to do it as the consolation prize exactly three times. The more perceptive amongst you might have noticed that this only works if there is already someone's bidding disc that is higher than yours on the card. Had I just plonked my free on there in the hopes that someone would outbid me, the other players would surely shaft me. But there is one more complication. If there's one thing I've learned as a British, it's that exploitation needs to form an orderly queue. Once everyone has staked their claims, then the consolation prizes will be resolved one by one, left to right. Meaning that if you suddenly won the booby prize of converting three iron into three upgrade tokens, and you don't actually have a single iron, much less three, you might have just spent a powerful puck to do diddly squat. It's a delightful oligarchy waltz, the rich and the powerful swerving and careening, throwing their influence about for petty squabbles. There's an array of big prizes and you want more than you can have. And since everyone at the table is as mean as you are, you can guarantee that they'll take every opportunity to rob you as soon as you become overambitious. Put a one somewhere without a disc on and you think, I'm never gonna win that. But 
you just never know. Let me get this right. So, so far we have theft, greed, exploitation, a Rhino Kinesia style auction, and we've only explained half of this game. Can it get any meaner than that? Well, actually, as we all know, it's very hard being a capitalist, which is why in phase two, you get to go on a little holiday. Whereas the first phase of Furnace is bright, innovative and interactive, the second phase couldn't be more the opposite. And it's better for it. Once you've done the hard labour of acquiring things, you now get to enjoy them. And what better way to enjoy things than some classic board game resource conversion? Here you'll take each card that you've acquired in previous bidding rounds and use them to convert resources into other resources, better resources or into money, which is the end goal of this adventure. There is a hierarchy here that becomes very clear once you start tinkering with these cards. Coal is the most common resource, iron is rarer, and oil is the hardest to get. But as soon as Furnace establishes that hierarchy, it lets you have fun by constantly breaking it. Convert one coal into one oil, that sounds like a good deal. But the trick is that every card gives you something and has its downsides. Yes, this card will let you convert one coal into oil, but it will only let you do it once. Is that better than a card that lets you convert iron into oil, but lets you do it twice? Who knows? It all depends on the array of cards that you've collected. Crucially, by now, it doesn't even matter which card is better. It's too late to change things. You already got these, and phase two is purely about taking one type of cube and converting it into another type of cube, card by card. Don't write me a letter. I know this is not a cube. It's an octagonal prism, but my point stands. Phase two has a veneer of decision making, a wispy thin blanket covering up the fact that all you're doing is typing the word execute and pressing enter. This might sound like a criticism, but it isn't. In fact, we think this is excellent game design. You've already crunched the crunch. Here is where you just indulge yourself. There's something very pleasing about navigating paths of efficiency. If I generate five coal, I can then spend four of that coal to become oil, then the leftover coal can become iron, then that iron can become oil, then that oil becomes victory points. The maths on these cards is all weird, hodgepodge numbers that don't quite add up. I spent five things to get two things to convert into three things, and now there's leftovers? What do I do with them? There's more than one way to skin a coal, and finding the optimal solution is the coin at the end of the stick. While we're on the subject of sticks, here's one that's not stuck in the mud. To break up this monotony of efficiency, one last puzzle populates phase two. Which cards do you upgrade? The final resource in the hierarchy are upgrade tokens. They're perhaps the hardest to get, but the most rewarding. Each of your capitalists start the game with a factory that they already own. Inheritance, it works. A starting factory will always give you an upgrade token whenever you activate it. It'll also let you convert some resources into coins and then it'll let you spend resources to upgrade tokens to upgrade your cards. Most importantly, this is the only card that you'll ever have that will let you upgrade other cards. You'll want to line up all the resources for upgrading before running the starting factory. This gets particularly tricky with some cards. For example, this card lets you convert one iron into an upgrade token meaning you want to run it before your factory card, but the upgraded side gives the highest coin output per card in the game, meaning you want to run it after your factory card? Who knew that being so rich and powerful could be so tiring? It's almost like having a real job. Is there anything in this game to make my wealth acquisition more palatable? Well, Elaine. <laughs> yes. What if I told you that? Yeah. In fairness, yeah? Yeah. As a variant, yeah. you could have capitalist superpowers. Like Tony Stark. Did, did you just mention a Marvel character so we would get more views? Yeah. Okay. What do you call Iron Man without a suit? I don't know. What, what do you call Iron Man without a suit? Tony Starkers. I think we better go to the next scene. There are, in fact, two variants in Furnace, each zhuzhing up play that can sometimes get a bit stale and reintroduce the same puzzle under a new light, or at least as much light as pierces the smog. 
The first gives starting abilities that fundamentally break one of Furnace's rules, but a different rule for each player. One player might be able to activate the same factory card twice per round. So if I activated this twice, I would get six iron instead of three iron. That's pretty nice. Another player might be able to ignore bidding restrictions. Normally, I can't put a disc where there's already a disc of my color. Now I can do that. I also can't put a disc where there's already another player's disc with the same value as mine. Here, once again, I can do that. And that introduces all kinds of funky complications. Finally, there's even a power that gives you an extra disc to do more bidding. Each feels powerful and interesting, adds variety and complications. It's great when you're getting to grips with the system. It provides direction and pushes you down that path. But ultimately, it's the variant we enjoyed less. I'm glad it exists because it's fun to tinker around with. And if you're playing Furnace for the first or second or third time, I recommend you try it out. But the core puzzle feels stronger. Furnace has a tendency to have inconsistent rounds. Sometimes an array of interesting cards appears and a terse battle ensues over who will get what. Other times it's just a splay of junk and everyone dejectedly pushes the discs on top to just get it over with. The capitalist superpower variant reinforces this design flaw because pushing you down a path also limits your versatility. It's barely noticeable if one round is a bit lackluster for everyone involved. You still all have your toys and you're all having fun. It's a lot more noticeable if the round is bad for you, but more consistently rewarding to other players. Not to mention that not all of these powers feel particularly even. And then there's the more British cues variant, which I think is my favorite way to play Furnace. Instead of resolving each card in phase two in whatever order you like, you now have to slot in each card in an orderly line as soon as you receive it. And then in phase two, you can only resolve the cards from left to right. I can only attempt to depict the look of horror that was on my face when I realized how this variant worked. And I will attempt the depiction now. Because robbing you of the ability to tinker with this engine feels monstrous. Not only do you no longer get to figure out your own route to efficiency, but it offloads the decision making from the second phase, making it feel shallower than it already was, to the first phase, making it feel crunchier than it already was. It makes the design better though, reinforcing the strengths of each phase. The highs are even higher, but snappier too. And the lows are more chill, relaxed. Now phase two is just you resolving a single card one by one in a row, which is nice. You're not worrying about your decisions, you're just eating your top hat. Each new acquisition adds a layer of puzzle that feels right in place, right where it should be. Unless of course you botched it and then you curse yourself for the rest of the game for that one bad placement. And that's part of the fun too. It seems monstrous only in comparison to the standard mode because you feel what's been taken away from you. But actually it just rejigs things to complement each phase and make them more cohesive. Which brings us to the last quirk of Furnace, player count, where once again the game feels different based on how many enemies you have at the table. Three and four players are much of a muchness, but the free player game introduces a funky quirk. Since there are exactly four rounds and the first player token simply rotates from one person to the next, one player gets to be first twice. Oddly, it is the same player on the first round as it is on the last round, which can feel a touch unfair because they pretty much get to pick the best resource conversion card on the first round where that is important. And then they also get to pick the best resource to points conversion card on the last round where that is once again important. It's not a big thing and most of the time it might amount to nothing, but I think it highlights the general feel of Furnace. When 50% of the game is bidding, a genre that relies on higher player counts, then 50% of the game suffers when there aren't more players. Capitalism is only fun when others play along. What of two players then? 
Not much, in fact. To spruce up the bidding, a third player is simulated by the roll of a die. Each bidding turn, one disc will be placed wherever the die falls, and that's that. It's clean, simple, and perhaps to simulate the chaotic nature of people, a touch unpredictable and arbitrary. I wouldn't purchase Furnace to play with just two players, but in a pinch, it does fine enough to have a nice time. Oh, we had some good times making fun of capitalism today. What? I thought you were being earnest. No, I was being Efka. <laughs> I might have to fire you for that joke. There's a preponderance in board games to adapt these po-faced sincere, this is how economy works and it's great settings. But I'm not sure that that is what's going on in Furnace. Don't get me wrong, this game is mostly abstract, but I can't help but feel that it might be a bit, just a little bit, tongue in cheek. You start the game with a working established business you have to do absolutely nothing for. You never need any money in this game for anything, yet it is ultimately your goal. You spend your entire game shifting wealth from one corner to another corner, you expand your empire, but only by the virtue of playing the equally privileged in a silly game. And hey, yeah, this could of course be unintentional. This could, much like what we discussed in our video about Kanban, be purely a product of a faithful simulation. And you might be right. You might be weary of that. You might be tired of the endless conveyor belt of industrially draped cardboard, satirical or not. And I wouldn't blame you for that, despite finding humor in the bleakness. But set all of that aside for a second, because I think the actual trouble with this game setting is that it sets expectations it cannot deliver on. When you look at Furnace, you think you're going to get something like Brass or Arkwright or one of those other similarly dressed top hat simulators. When you actually look under the Emperor's clothes, you find something closer to Century Spice Road, a game we covered a very long time ago. I think if you go in with those expectations, Furnace will delight you. It's cleaner, leaner and more fun than Century or Splendor or any other game where you collect resources to convert into other resources to convert into other resources. But what if people want something bigger, grander and louder than any of those? Uh -huh. Well, Elaine, I will never miss an opportunity to big up our 2017 Game of the Year Sidereal Confluence. Yes, you heard me right. Sure, it's nothing like Furnace and Scope. Sidereal Confluence is a massive strategy game that takes hours, involves a large player count and diplomacy negotiation, and is only a holiday game in the sense that you're most likely gonna end up playing it at board game conventions. But that joy of inputting less and or worse things and outputting more and or bigger things is what drives both of them. Leave that alone, that's mine. So pick your poison. You want big, grandiose and crunchy, sidereal confluence is most similar to it in terms of what you get out of it. You want it light and breezy, Furnace will let you pour your sweat and tears doing absolutely nothing and still having a grand time winning capitalism. But what will it cost? 35 pounds. No, I meant like, will it cost you your soul? It'll cost 35 pounds. I think we're done here. I think we are. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. I know that everyone in life has this feeling. You see something like a cool photo, or you hear someone singing, or it's a really nicely decorated room, and you think to yourself, I wish I knew how to do that, but I don't even know where to begin. Well, Skillshare is where you begin. It's the website with thousands of classes on almost any subject, great for beginners, or anyone wanting to spruce up their skill set. I get a bit jealous when I see a YouTube video that has a really nice animation because I have no idea what I would even do to animate something. After watching Libby Vanderplug's class Animation for Illustration, adding movement with Procreate and Photoshop, I know not only what I need to do to start, I felt like, hey, this isn't that hard. I could give it a go. So in the future, if you see an open included video with a little doodle, you'll know how I got there. Plus, there's subtitles available in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German, a really nice addition. If you'd like to join Skillshare, well, I've got some good news. The first 1000 of you to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can start your creativity today. Do, do you want to play Furnace? Do you want to play Furnace?
so this so okay look this is a bidding disc right you no you don't eat it you can't no it's not for eating it's for bidding it's for winning capitalism right so this is a four bidding disc which is as you can tell bigger than a free bidding disc yeah that's right and uh, and these are even smaller this is a two and a one right so what you do is you want these factories and what no Daddy. pay attention pay attention Daddy. pay Daddy. attention <laughs> Oh, you want to come to mum? I don't think she wants to listen to the board game explanation. Oh, she, look, I made this display and and she, she stepped all over it. 